Hello everyone, welcome to the I Can Cafe session part one of two on Goodreader. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Cully and I will be here to talk you through some of this stuff and of course if you have any questions let me know or anyone who works with Navigating Ninth Grade know we'll be happy to help you. Goodreader is one of those things that you absolutely have got to know how to use in order to be successful here right off the bat. So please uh, let anyone know if you are having trouble, but I think that uh, like any other app on the iPad, it's pretty easy to get to know, um, but there's a lot going on. So let's go ahead. This, like I said, is part one where we're just going to orient you to what it looks like. Um, part two will actually show you what to do with actual documents when you want to uh, mark them up, highlight them, do all that fun stuff. All right, so let's jump into it. Here we are, right at the top of my screen. You see um, the screen here looks like an iPad. You won't see my finger swiping across the screen, but I'll talk you through the navigation. It shouldn't be too hard to follow along. Click on Goodreader. Uh, that is the folder with the eyeball on it. Okay, so here we go. Folder with the eyeball. Goodreader. Nice. All right, so if you look at Goodreader, the first thing you're going to notice is that there are two sections. Okay, and the two sections of Goodreader. On the left section you have all of your documents and folders and we'll be talking about that. On the right section you have uh, all of the menu items, the things that you can do uh, in terms of moving things around and downloading documents and all of that fun stuff. So let's uh, look first at the left hand side. So I have there's a downloads folder that comes with Goodreader. Um, iCloud if you want to turn that on, I'm going to stop real quickly here. On the bottom, uh, down uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see what looks like a gear. If you click on that gear right there, um, gear, that's always the icon for settings. If I click on general settings and I scroll down, um, iCloud says if I turn on iCloud, and right now I have it turned on, uh, but I can turn it off or on. If I turn it off like this, the iCloud icon on the left will disappear. If I turn it on, the iCloud icon will up here. That allows you, of course, to download or upload things to your cloud storage. And again, you'll want to think about that. You have a, a limited amount of storage. What do you want to put there? But if you want to link Goodreader to your iCloud, this is, this is the way to do it. I'm going to close that. All right. Um, the other thing we want to do is say, hey, for a lot of your classes, you probably want to make folders in Goodreader to store some documents. It's a great way to organize yourself and a lot of your teachers will be recommending it. So it's very simple on the right hand side in the middle. Um, well, first of all, there's if I, I can click on any one of these areas on the right hand side and it gives me sub menus. Okay, but I'm going to go right down to manage files right now uh, because I believe that's the default when it pops up. Anyway, manage files, you'll see that regardless of whether anything's checked off or not, you'll see that you have a new folder uh, button that you can access right away. So if I click on new folder, okay, I'm going to say for example physical physical science and bada boom right on the left hand side I have a physical science folder. You do it again. I can say history. Okay, and there you have a history folder. So that's important um, to keep yourself organized with all the documents that you're going to be using. Not every class is going to require it, but you don't want to have a left-hand side of your Goodreader with just a giant list of documents that you have to scroll through all the time. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, all right? So let's go to the top now to preview, all right? And all the preview is, is if I have this document, if you look on my left-hand side, there is one document that I don't have in a folder. It says DNA. I click on that. It just lets me look and see, is that the document I want or not? All right, moving on, find files. If I wanted to say, oh gosh, let's see, where is that DNA file? If I type in DNA, ah, it'll find anything with DNA in the title. And of course, there's only one document that I have there. So if you do lose something and you know what's in the title, if there's some stream of characters you know you can search for, you can do that. And like it says, by name here. Uh, all right, so there's that. And, and you can play around with that feature. That's fine. All right, so that's uh, preview, find files. Um, manage files. Let's go to manage files. Whenever I click manage files, you'll notice that on the left hand side some circles appear. And if I click one of the circles, that means that it associates the menus on the right with whatever I have identified on the left. So let me pick that DNA file. If I click the circle there, 
uh, and check mark it, all of a sudden now all of these menu items appear. So one thing I can do, like I said, we've already added folders. I can rename it. So if you look on the menu on the right, in that gray box, you'll see on the left-hand column there, there's a, or excuse me, on the right-hand column, there's rename. And you can rename the folder. So I'm going to say DNA stuff part one. I don't know. Whatever you want to name it. And of course, it will rename your file. Okay. I can move it. So again, if I highlight it and say, well, where do I want it? And this is, again, important. You don't want to leave just a gazillion documents sitting on the left in an unorganized fashion. It doesn't make sense. So on the top here, on the right-hand side, on the top, you'll see next to copy, there's move. Okay. And it's going to ask you, where do you want to move that thing to? Well, I think I'm going to put it in physical science for right now. And then at the bottom, it says, uh, move one item here. Click on that. And it disappears from the random disorganized part on the left, and you'll notice now physical science, the folder physical science, so if I click done over here, this physical science folder, all right, has the document DNA stuff part one in it, and it also says it has one document in there, so there's a number one by it, okay? Um, now, if I go in there, and I have this DNA stuff, all right, uh, I'm going to hold my finger over it just for a moment, and if I do that, I'll get that nice green check mark, and there's another thing I wanted to show you uh, in the box on the right-hand side. If you click Open In, I'm going to say uh, As Is, it will give you a menu item um, of all the different programs in which you can open that PDF file. And your menu items will look different than mine because you'll have different programs on your iPad. But this is very handy if you want to organize your documents in Goodreader and then open them up and do something with them in other programs, you can do that. So I'm going to click Done. Okay, go back to my documents. Um, last thing, uh, anyway, you can play around with the menus in there. Uh, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, but again, if you have a document or a folder highlighted, the Manage Files then uh, will be available to you. And um, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, web Downloads, that's the next one down here. So in your web downloads, this allows you to get a document from the web. So the one that we're going to be annotating later, let's get right now. So I'm going to click Browse the Web, and it will actually take you to a browser. And I'm going to go, since I've already typed Google, I'm going to go to Google, and it will call Google up. It's so nice. I'm going to type World War II PDF. Okay. And it does a Google search. You're in a Google search engine. And if the, the one that's second down, a brief history of World War II, that's, let's say that's the document your teacher said you want to grab. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to then open it up. And bada boom, there you are. And you say, yeah, that's the one I want. Okay, directly below it, you'll see there's a few menu items. But the one I'm interested in right now is the circle with the down arrow. You click on that, and it's going to let you know that, hey, it started downloading. Okie doke. And on the top left-hand side is My Documents. I'm going to go back there. And if you'll notice, under Recent Downloads, um, if it were still downloading, you'd see it under Downloads in Progress. But it already downloaded it. And you're like, great. Uh, and if you go to your left-hand side now, under the Downloads folder, there it is. All right. Well, we're going to move this. And why do you want to move it? I think there are two reasons. One is just to be organized. You want to keep the documents you put in Goodreader in the right place. And number two, if you start modifying it, what you'll find later is you'll get a dialog box saying that, hey, if you don't get it out of the downloads folder, you might lose all of your modifications. And so it's always good, as soon as you download something, to put it where it needs to be. So I'm going to click on, hold my finger down on that, and say, aha, let's get our dialog back on Manage Files. I'm going to move it where do I want it to go. I'm going to go to My Documents, and I'm going to put it in History, and move one item here. All right, done. And then if I go back there, now in history, you'll see that the World War II document that we just downloaded is right there. So that's how to get a document from the web. Okay, And your teachers will be talking to you more about that. All right. Uh, now, that's web downloads. And once you've downloaded it, notice uh, under Recent Downloads, I can click the red trash icon and just get rid of it if I want. And it'll, it'll move. Or I can re-download it, but uh, up to you. Uh, now, the last one down there is connect to servers. If you notice that I have my Dropbox put 
uh, there. I would recommend that since Dropbox is used all the time at Drew, that you link Goodreader to your Dropbox, okay? So if I go Add under Connect to Servers, click Add, and it gives you all kinds of options, and you might have some of these options, you're welcome to use them. I'm going to just click on Dropbox, all right? And you have to give it a name, okay? So, I don't know, I called it my Dropbox. You can say, you know, Bob's Dropbox. Okay, let's see if you wanted to add another one. I'm going to add it. And it says, okay, well, there's Bob's Dropbox, and it's a Dropbox, and you click on it. It's going to ask you to sign in. And once you sign in, okay, and I'm going to cancel that. Okay, I'm going to close that. And um, I'm actually going to... Um, delete Bob's Dropbox, okay, and show you that if I click on my Dropbox, I've already signed in, and there are all my folders uh, with my documents, and if I want to download a document from my Dropbox, all I have to do is go down and say, okay, I'm going to grab um, this one here, and what's in there, Force and Motion, and I'm going to click this particular document here, and on the bottom it says download, yeah, I'm going to download it, and it says where do you want to put it? And I can go in the top left here, navigate out, and say, aha, I'm going to put it in physical science, and then download file here. Okay, and then I'm going to close this out. And you'll see again under recent downloads, it was there. If I go back to my documents, all right, under physical science, I look at it, and aha, right there, at the very top is my acceleration and force problems, what I just downloaded from my Dropbox. So, awesome. Lots of great stuff. Okay, so anyway, this is your quick, brief orientation to the main menu items in Goodreader. All right, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part two of this ICANN Cafe session on Goodreader.